Hello everybody! In this video tutorial I want to quickly discuss how uh, glycogenolysis is actually regulated and particularly regulated in the liver. So it's a fairly complex um, process but we know that in the liver we have a huge storage of glycogen and if the levels of uh, glucose in the blood are getting low, then it's the liver's job actually to ensure that we've got enough glucose in the bloodstream. So how is this actually accomplished? We, it starts off with the release of glucagon, a small peptide hormone, which is also known as the hunger hormone that indicates if we are low in uh, blood glucose levels. Glucagon will bind to its receptor on the cell membrane. It is a 7 transmembrane uh, G protein coupled receptor and upon binding of glucagon the G protein will be released and it will activate another enzyme adenylate cyclase. The activity of adenylate cyclase is basically to take ATP and convert that into cyclic AMP. And cyclic AMP is a second messenger molecule that can activate and also deactivate uh, a number of other molecules in the cell. In our case, cyclic AMP will activate a protein kinase A, PKA, and because it is a kinase, we know what it does. It actually transfers a phosphate residue from ATP onto another protein, and we generate ADP. So this protein, uh, the target for protein kinase A, is uh, a protein called phosphorylase kinase, PHK. Usually phosphorylase kinase is in a less active form, but if it gets phosphorylated by PKA, that's indicated here with this phosphor group here, if phosphorylase kinase gets activated by PKA, we get a more active form of this phosphorylase kinase. And what we see here is we can also then set back the uh, active and convert the active phosphorylase kinase through a process of dephosphorylation, which is carried out by this uh, phosphatase, PP1, which is a phosphoprotein phosphatase one. So this would reset the active phosphorylase kinase and converts it back into the less active form. And what we see here is a typical example of such a, what used to be called a futile cycle, but we know it's not a futile cycle. It is actually the concept of zero order ultrasensitivity. And I've got a video on that, which indicates that it is sort of a switch. So we can very easily switch with the help of this PKA, for uh, protein kinase A, we can switch between the less active and the more active form of phosphorylase kinase. And this uh, switch is even uh, more pronounced because PKA not only activates this way, it also inactivates phosphoprotein phosphatase 1, so it shifts everything to that side and inhibits the reverse reaction. Nevertheless, we now have an active phosphorylase kinase. And again, we know what this enzyme does because it is a kinase. So again, we transfer um, a phosphate residue from ATP onto the target in this case. And this one is glycogen phosphorylase. So usually glycogen phosphorylase is not very active, but when it becomes phosphorylated, in this case here, 
through the phosphorylase kinase to the active phosphorylase kinase again we shift it into the active state and now this glycogen phosphorylase which is uh, in a more active state can now chop off a glucose residue from our glycogen pool and this is done through phosphory phosphorylation uh, we use phosphate not water to remove one glucose molecule from the glycogen and we get glucose one phosphate and uh, with this active very active form of the glycogen phosphorylase we can return that back through the phosphoprotein phosphatase one again into the less active form uh, glycogen phosphorylase uh, we also have other regulation of uh, glucose phosphate glycogen phosphorylase so in the presence of ATP and glucose 6 phosphate when the energy levels are already high we don't need to uh, remove glucose from glycogen so we can inhibit this glycogen phosphorylase uh, and we don't need to tap into our glycogen resources and of course because we have the same molecule here pp1 and pp1 here as well pka protein kinase a would also inhibit uh, this re reverse reaction from active glycogen phosphorylase into the less active unphosphorylated glycogen phosphorylase and this is basically how the liver can regulate the amount of glucose that is in the blood in the liver then itself we would convert this uh, we would convert this glucose 1 phosphate into glucose 6 phosphate and we would export the glucose into the bloodstream uh, if we are in this uh, uh, in the hunger state if there is not enough glucose in the bloodstream. So I hope this makes sense and thank you very much for watching.